Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. And I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men who died. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee, across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea, from Detroit down to Houston and New York to LA, where there's pride in every American heart, and it's time we stand and say. Well, thank you very much. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. And they tell me, the pundits and otherwise, that there's never been one like this. There's never been anything so conclusive. This was an amazing, an amazing night, an amazing day. It's been an incredible period of time in our country's history. It's been sad in so many ways, but I think it's going to be inspiring because we're going to do something that, frankly, nobody's been able to do for a long time. We've — we've watched our country take a great beating over the last three years, and nobody thought a thing like this would be possible. We wouldn't have Russia attacking Ukraine. We wouldn't have Israel being attacked. Iran, as you know, was broke when I was running things. They were broke. They didn't have money for Hamas. They didn't have money for Hezbollah. We had no inflation. Inflation is destroying the middle class. It's destroying everything. Inflation, if you look back over the history, hundreds of years back, it's called — inflation is called a country buster. And that's what it's doing to our country. What's happened with inflation has been unbelievable. A lot of people say, a lot of experts have said the stock market's the only thing that's doing well, and that's doing well because our poll numbers are so much higher than Joe Biden's. He's the worst president in the history of our country. There's never been anything like what's happening to our country. Today it was announced that 325,000 people were flown in from parts unknown. Migrants were flown in, airplane, not going through borders, not going through that great Texas barrier that I was with the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, the other day, and we were looking at the job they're doing. But in the meantime, they're pouring into California and they're pouring into Arizona. 
because those governors aren't doing anything. They're doing nothing. But today, it was just announced before I came out. It was unbelievable. I said, that must be a mistake. They flew 325,000 migrants, flew them in over the borders, in into our country. So that really tells you where they're coming from. They want open borders, and open borders are going to destroy our country. We need borders, and we need free and fair elections, or we don't have a country. Uh, this is an incredible group of people. So many celebrities that I'm not going to introduce any because I'm just going to get myself in trouble if I do that, because I'll leave out most of you. But we have, this is a room chock full of incredible, talented people, like some of the guys standing right in front of me, right? Big, big futures, big, fat, beautiful futures. Oh, I'd love to be your age. I'd pay you a lot of money to be your age. But we have, uh, we have some tremendously talented people in this room, including tremendously talented political people that have helped me right from the beginning. We had the safest border in the history of our country. We built 571 miles of wall. We had Mexico supply us with 28,000 soldiers because we, we wanted them, that's why. And they said, uh, we won't do that. I said, yes, you will, you will. And in the end, they did. It was an easy negotiation, but we had the safest border, the best numbers we've ever had, and now we have the worst numbers probably, probably in the history of the world. It's uh, sad to see what's happening to our cities. Our cities are being overrun with migrant crime, and that's Biden migrant crime. But it's a new category of crime, and it's violent, where they'll stand in the middle of a street and have fistfights with police officers, and if they did that in their countries from where they came, They'd be killed instantly, instantly. They wouldn't do that. So the world is laughing at us. The world is taking advantage of us. Three years ago, we were at a level. We were energy independent. We were going to be very shortly energy dominant. And today, we're getting oil from Venezuela. Can you believe it? And we're doing numbers on that oil. You know what we're doing? We're refining the oil. We have our refinery for that oil. It's really, I call it tar. It's not oil. It's terrible. We have real stuff. But we're refining it in Houston. So for all of the environmentalists, you ought to look at that, because all of that tar is going right up into the atmosphere. You just ought to take a look. It's the only plant that can do it. We have the only plants that can take tar and make it into oil. And that's what it is. It's a shame. But we were energy independent. We were going to be energy dominant. We were going to be supplying oil to Europe, all over the world. And then a tragic thing happened during the election. It was a tragedy, because you wouldn't have think of it. All of the problems that you have today, I don't think you would have had any of them. You'd only have success. And that's what's ultimately going to unify this country and unify this party. We have a great Republican Party with tremendous talent. And we want to have unity. And we're going to have unity. And it's going to happen very quickly. And I have been saying lately, success will bring unity to our country. And it happened before. We had the best economy our country's ever had. And people were calling me that I would have said, will never happen. It'll never happen. They wanted to get together African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, women, men, people with diplomas from the best schools in the world. and people that didn't graduate from high school. Every single group was doing better than ever before. And it was a beautiful thing. Our country was coming together. Our country was coming together. And now we have a very divided country. We have a country that a political person uses weaponization against his political opponent. Never happened here. It happens in other countries, but they're third world countries. And in some ways, we're a third world country. We're a third world country at our borders, and we're a third world country at our elections. And we have to stop that. We need a fair and free press. The press has not been fair, nor has it been free. But maybe someday they will be. They're being beaten up pretty badly. People aren't trusting them. They're not believing them. And really, it's a very important fact. The press used to be the policeman. It used to police our country. Now nobody has confidence in them, and we have to get that confidence back. It's so important for the success of our country. So important.
So this has been a day that we, uh, we've been waiting for. I want to thank my family for being here. It's a great family. I have a great family. They've had it very easy since I decided to run for politics. They say, thanks a lot, Dad. We appreciate it. But they're strong, and they're very capable people, and they, they love the country. They really do love the country, and we appreciate it. And I want to thank everybody, my staff, uh, Susie, Chris, incredible job. Incredible job you're doing. I read an article yesterday where it said this is one of the finest run campaigns that anybody has ever seen. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. It's really a statement. And we have no choice because November 5th, it's right around the corner, November 5th is going to go down as the single most important day in the history of our country. We're going to take it, and we're going to make it like it should be, respected. Right now, we're not respected. Right now, our country is known as a joke. It's a joke. Other leaders who I speak to, other leaders can't believe what happened to us. Because three years ago, we were the most respected country anywhere in the world by far. We were doing things that nobody could believe. China was paying us billions and billions of dollars. In 25 years, they paid us nothing, zero, not 10 cents. I was getting billions of dollars, and they were happy about it, as happy as you can be. Of course, maybe there's reasons for things having happened, but they were not, uh, they were not so happy with certain things, I guess, based on things that took place. But they were, we were getting along with everybody. We were getting along, and we were respected by everybody. We had no wars. Remember when? I had the debate with Hillary Clinton. She said, look, look at him. Look at that personality. He's going to cause wars, wars. I said, no, my personality is going to keep us out of wars. And that's what happened. <laughs> For 20 years, they were fighting ISIS. I defeated ISIS in four weeks. I got rid of ISIS 100%. 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. And we had no wars, and we stopped wars. We weren't getting along with a lot of countries. All of a sudden, North Korea, which is a serious nuclear power, but North Korea came along. Kim Jong-un, we got along very well. We got along very well with China until COVID. That was a little bit too much, as far as I was concerned. That was too much. Couldn't take that one. But we made a trade deal with China that I don't even talk about. $50 billion a year in product they bought from our farmers, our manufacturers. They used to buy 10. I got 50, and it was great. But COVID, uh, I, I don't even talk about that because COVID was such a horrible thing. It started in the Wuhan labs, just as I said, it's the Wuhan labs. And it came out, I believe, through incompetence. I believe it was incompetence. Some people think it wasn't, but I believe it was. But regardless, it caused $60 trillion worth of damage and death all over the world, all over the world. And we did a fantastic job on that. We never got credit for that. Unbelievable job on that. We came up with things that nobody thought was possible. Don't forget, when it came in, nobody had an idea what it was. They didn't even use the word pandemic. Nobody had an idea. But we did a fantastic job. And we got a lot of credit for the economy, a lot of credit for our foreign policy. I think credit like nobody, very few people have gotten. And the press was very honest about it. They give us very high marks on foreign policy, the Abraham Accords, so many different things we did. But we, uh, we never got the kind of, of due that we should have for the COVID, or as I call it affectionately, the Chinese virus, the China virus which is a much more accurate term. And despite that, the stock market, when we turned it over, the stock market was higher 
than it was prior to COVID coming in. It was an amazing thing. We did an amazing job, and uh, we have so many people that worked on that, so many of the doctors, so many of the scientists that worked with us on that. It, it was really, really something. But there's never been an administration that had more success in so many different elements. We got the largest tax cuts in history. We have the largest regulation cuts in history. We rebuilt our military. And what happened, we rebuilt our entire military and uh, beautiful. We had jets, jet fighters that were 53 years old. And we had all brand new jet fighters. And then uh, after this other group of people that didn't know what they were doing, they took over and we had that horrible uh, surrender in Afghanistan. I call it a surrender. We took the soldiers out first. You know, I dealt with the leaders of the Taliban in Afghanistan. They were the ones that were causing the trouble. The press was very angry because they said, why are you calling them? I said, because that's where the problem is. I say, oftentimes, I say, they asked Jesse James, Jesse, why do you rob banks? He said, because that's where the money is. <laughs> and I said, that's where the problem is with the Taliban. And I spoke to Abdul. He's still the leader, believe it or not. He's really the leader of Afghanistan, but he's the leader of the Taliban, a rough group. I say, don't ever shoot our soldiers again. Don't ever do it. Very interesting what happened is that, uh, you know, we were having, during the Obama administration previously, uh, they were shooting a lot of our soldiers. And I let them know. I said, don't ever, ever let that happen. I said very, in a rather nasty fashion. We don't have to go into it tonight. For 18 months, we lost nobody in Afghanistan. And then we had that horrible, horrible withdrawal where we lost 13 soldiers, 38 horribly wounded, left Americans behind. You know, you have Americans right now still behind. Call them hostages, if you like. It was a terrible moment. We left $85 billion worth of brand new, beautiful equipment behind, jets and tanks and everything you couldn't think of, goggles, night goggles. They didn't use to fight. They're good fighters. They didn't used to fight at night, but now they do because they have goggles. They have better goggles than we have. So I just want to uh, tell you that led to a lot of bad things. And now the worst things are happening. The things that are happening now are unthinkable. And they're unthinkable at the border. We have millions of people invading our country. This is an, ev an invasion. This is the worst invasion probably We've never had anything like it. No country has ever had anything like it. The number today could be 15 million people. And they're coming from rough places and dangerous places. And we had that shut down. We had everything going so beautifully. When Joe Biden goes to the beach, because somebody on his staff thinks he looks very good in a bathing suit, <laughs> until he can't get his feet out of the sand or lift the chair, which weighs about nine ounces. Joe Biden, if he would have just left everything alone, he could have gone to the beach. He would have had a tremendous success at the border and elsewhere. So we're going to take back our country. We're going to make sure. We are, we are going to do it right. We're going to have the greatest economy ever in the history of our country. We're going to top what we did. We're going to become an energy center of the world. We are ready to become energy dominant, and they stop that. They stop that. But we're going to become energy dominant. We're going to pay off debt. We're going to do things that nobody thought was possible. You know, we hadn't done our second phase of the tax cuts. When we did the tax cuts, the Democrats fought us very hard. And now they say, well, I guess that was pretty good, because we took in much more revenues after we cut taxes, and then we did all of those regulation cuts, and people were working, and everybody was happy, and we were all proud of our country. But we're going to win this election because we have no choice. If we lose the election, we're not going to have a country left. And we're going to do something. Thank you very much. We love you, too. And we love our country. And we can't let this magnificent some people call it an experiment. I don't call it an experiment. I just say this is a magnificent 
place, a magnificent country. And it's so sad to see how far it's come and gone. When you look at, when you look at the depths of, of where it's gone, we can't let that happen. We're going to straighten it out. We're going to close our borders. We're going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to get the inflation down. And we are going to make our country greater than ever before. And we're going to do it quickly. We're going to do it quickly. It's going to go fast. We have to get the criminals out. We have many, many criminals that have entered our country. We have people coming in from such, such bad places. And we're going to have to get them out. We have murderers that are being deposited into our country. We have drug dealers at the biggest and highest levels that are coming into our country. We have people coming into our country that just shouldn't be here. But many, and I say many, large percentages, they come in through the caravans, they come in many different ways. Now we find out again, they come in through airplanes, we send them in, this is crazy. But they come into our country, we're gonna stop them, we're gonna close our borders, we're gonna have to deport a lot of people a lot of bad people, because our countries can't live like this. Our cities, our cities are choking to death. Our states are dying. And frankly, our country is dying. And we're going to make America great again, greater than ever before. Thank you very much. It's been a big night. Thank you very much. Thank you.